So this will be the last portion of new material for the semester. Um, I'm going to do problem six. Your problem five and seven have the same skill. In each of the problems five, six, and seven, a function is given, and that function talks about um, a level of either water in a reservoir or snow at the base of a mountain over a one-year period. And I'm given a function, and that function, if I plug values in for x, or in this case t, it'll give out um, either the depth of snow at the base of a mountain or how much water is in a reservoir. Trust me that the functions that I've created um, probably model no water reservoir in the world, nor no snow at the base of a mountain. I just tried to make up a problem that sounded good, that at least is good for interpretation purposes, but I don't think the parabola equations that I've created are um, you know, useful for um, real, real world. You're not going to take this problem and solve a real world how much snow is at the base of a mountain. They, snow doesn't follow, follow a parabolic growth for what it's worth. But anyways, if you look at your problem five and my problem six, they're 100% identical, except I changed the function. Similarly, problem seven is essentially the same. I just changed words just slightly. Um, hopefully when I do problem six, you can easily do problem five. And then if you can't easily do problem seven, you can look at my solutions. Those might help you. If not, we can work on it together. So problem six gives me a function and it says the h of t is the height in feet, just like the last problem I did, um, the height of a um, object. This is the height or depth of water in a reservoir over a one year period. In the last problem we did, the t standard for time stood for time in seconds. And in this problem, the t represents the month of the year. If I plug in one to this function, it's going to give me how deep the water was in the reservoir during the month of January, maybe the average depth during that month. If I plug in two, it will give me the average depth during February. If I plug in 12, it will give me the depth of that reservoir during the month of December. So I'm asked to make a table of values and sketch a graph. And real specifically, I'm going to make my columns labeled nicer. The X column, I'm going to write month because the variable T stands for the month of the year. The Y column, I'm going to write depth or something that represents how much water level how much water is in the reservoir and that's technically the function name so this function the variable to the right of the equal sign is a month the variable to the left of the equal sign is how deep the water is and so I'm going to make a table of value and graph the function 5 times the quantity t minus 7 squared plus 3 and this is the friendly kind of problem. I could inspect and get the table because it's written in standard form. So I'm going to change the sign of the t minus 7 and put a 7 in the middle of my x column. That 7 stands for July. I'm going to go backwards and write a 6, which stands for June, a 5, which stands for May, and then an 8, which stands for August, and a 9 that stands for September. So those numbers in the x column are months of the year. Now for each x I'm going to get a y. The first one I'm going to do h of 5 equals 5 times 5 minus 7 squared plus 3. So 5 times 5 minus 7 squared plus 3. That 23 feet this, so this point right here would say, in May, the average depth of the reservoir was 23 feet. So at each point, the, the x is a month of the year, and the y is the depth. So when I plugged in 6, it would say in June, 
it went down to eight feet. Maybe it's holding snow runoff and it's just evaporating like a lot of the reservoirs do. And then seven, I get all the way down to three feet. It's almost drained, which is in July. And again, this is not probably a very realistic problem. I'm just making up something that I could have you interpret the values. But not so much, it's not really that realistic. So that is the um, table of values. Now I'm going to sketch a graph. So I'm going to do the point 5 comma 23. I'm just estimating 6 comma 8, 7 comma 3. That's the vertex. Maybe I actually write the name of that down. I could. And then you see the nice symmetry. So I know I have a good set of values then 9 comma 23 so my reservoir's depth is going to look something like that it goes down 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 and then in july and then maybe the rainy season starts and it starts going up again so that's part a i've made a table and sketched a graph i didn't label my axes like the last time but i should have the x-axis represents month and the y-axis represents how much the depth of the water in the reservoir. So for part B, the numbers on the x-axis represent the month of the year. For part C, the numbers on the y-axis represent the depth. And then identify the vertex. The vertex is the 0.73. What do the coordinates of the vertex represent? The 7 represents July, and the 3 represents the 3 feet depth of the reservoir. So let me try to write E down here. So in July, it's really the reservoir reached its lowest level. doesn't ask for that, but I'll tack it on. The reservoir... Lord knows I'm looking above to spell that, otherwise I would look like a moron. In July, the res reservoir um, reached its lowest, reached its lowest level. This would be a better answer. Of three feet. Boy, if you saw the videos I deleted this summer, oh my gosh. I don't, you are amazed at how poor of a lecture I could put together if I don't really put the effort in. I mean, hopefully the, the lectures here are, aren't ridiculous. And heck, if I don't teach an online class, maybe nobody ever even watches these, which, which is okay. But I'm just preparing just in case this class needs to be online. Um, part F, how low did the water level get? Well, I already answered that question. It's three feet. And... July is the seventh month, so G is July. Five should be identical, 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 because it's the same words, just new function, and probably it's going to be September for an answer for yours. Seven, which is your last problem to do, not likely to creep its way onto the test because I don't have an even problem that marries with it or pairs with it but your seven should work the same way. Um, if I look at seven, just because I have a few seconds here, the video's not so long. If I look at problem seven, which is a homework problem for you, I don't want to do the whole thing, but I want to help you understand it. So seven, the depth in, in, in feet of snow at the base of a mountain over a one year period is given by this function. H of t equals four times t minus eight squared plus 15 where t equals 1 is January, t equals 2 is February, t equals 6 is June, t equals 10 is October, and so forth. In 7, I ask you to make a table of values, and similarly, the x column's going to represent the month of the year, and the y column is going to be the, you know, the, how much snow is at the base of the mountain, so it's going to be the snow depth at the base of the mountain in feet. 
So the y-axis, I could say feet or snow depth, maybe. It is what it's measuring. It's the snow depth in feet is what it's measuring. This function, if you put a month of the year in, it gives out the amount of snow. And if you're making a table of values, because this guy has a parenthesis, it's written in standard form, I would put 8, which stands for August, in the middle of my table, go up and down, use it to find my Y's, sketch my graph. The numbers on the horizontal axes again represent months. The number on the Y axes represent feet, but more specifically, how, much, how, many, how many feet of snow are at the base of a mountain. The vertex for part D is going to be buried in the middle of my X column. And we should know that the vertex represents the 8. It's going to represent the month of the year. The Y is going to represent the amount of snow at the base of the mountain during that month, or at least the average maybe amount during that month. And then, oh, this shouldn't say how low did the water get. How low did the snow, I'll change that, get this year, and when did it reach its mark? So I changed the words of the problems, but I didn't change it all the way through. So how low did the snow get that year? And you should be able to answer those questions, hopefully without a lot of um, misery. Um, so that's kind of it for new material. Chapter 6, I hope, felt like a friendly chapter. We just need to finish up the practice tests and get our tests done. And then for a lot of you, that will be the end of the semester because I always make the final exam an optional test, a test that replaces your lowest test score. And if you're happy with your grade going into the semester's end, then the final is not going to be something you have to take. So let me pause the video, go fix this mistake, and post this on YouTube. And uh, my video recording for the summer, which has been a, quite a task, will be behind me until you tell me I have 800 mistakes and I need to record a couple of videos again, which is completely good.